Hey everyone, and thanks Kim for kicking things off. We're excited to have you all here because we know it's going to be a fun and insightful event today. Over the next couple of hours, we're going to be discussing artificial intelligence in the context of the web, and you'll be hearing from a variety of special guests on how the nuances of AI are influencing the world's largest open communication platform and how we built for it. How should we be thinking about AI and the web? What opportunities and risks exist here? How do we successfully enable the benefits of AI for those building today's web experiences? At Netlify, we believe it's critical to maintain the promise of an open web and a freedom to build on your terms. And personally, I believe there's no better way in today's landscape to discuss the modern open web and the possibilities of what can be built for it than through the lens of these transformative AI breakthroughs we're seeing more and more of. It's through the intersection that we are seeing one of the most exciting opportunities unfold with web and developer experience. And today, I would like to talk to you about the biggest transformation in tech since the advent of mobile. So when we look into the next five years ahead of us, there's no doubt that one of the biggest forces of transformation will be AI and generative AI. And I think all of us are wondering exactly what is AI going to mean? What's going to change? And I think one of the things that's, that's easy to say that we can all agree on is acceleration. AI will mean more content, more code, more assets, more throughput. We'll have more of, of everything. I also tend to believe that, that, that AI will lead to more developers in the future rather than less. There's often this dread that, that AI will automate it all away and we won't need developers uh, anymore. But I view it as the opposite lens of what you call Yevon's paradox and economic law that says that when the cost of a resource goes down, demand goes up. And I think we'll see just in the same way as, as, as uh, tools like Netlify have drastically changed what a small group of web developers can do to build globally available, amazing experiences in a, in a quick time. Like from the moment we started helping developers be that more and more, much more productive until today, we've probably seen the amount of web developers grow by an order of magnitude. AI will mean the same. The other big trend ahead of us, driven by the transformation from AI, it's what I talk about as UI 2.0. Since the dawn of, of computer and, and human interfaces, we've all built around this core constraint that a computer needs precise instructions and that our interfaces are fundamentally transactional. I click a button, something happens. Type a prompt, something happens. And it's very driven by predictable responses to what I want the computer to do. That core constraint is essentially going away with generative AI, where we can express intent and have agents go out and, and, and do things and report back to us later or interact with each other. And that'll transform what kind of, of user experiences we can build and, and will build. It'll transform the kind of devices we're building for. We're already seeing experiments like the humane AI pin, or we are seeing new AI devices emerge that will also benefit from the ability to create virtual worlds that, that would have taken too many resources before. So we should imagine like a fundamental disruption of what a computer human interface looks like in the next five years. That's going to be even more drastic than the transition from desktops to, to mobile. And it's gonna require us to, to reinvent almost all the tooling we use to build user experiences and find new knowledge of, of how to invent this new category of UI 2.0. And that leads us to, to the big trend that we've landed to for a while now around composable architectures. When you think about composable, it comes down to many ways to the old decision between do you build or do you buy? For a long time, companies were thinking, okay, we can buy this big web experience in a box and marketeers and merchant can just tweak some parameters and, and, and we'll get the right experience for our customers. I think already now there's a big sign that, that most large companies have realized that if you want to build something truly differentiated, you have to be able to build. You can't just buy. But you want your developers to build what differentiates you, 
You don't want your developers to build release management or content management platforms or the commerce backend. So the transactional pieces of commonly reusable logic that's the same for any type of company in your space. You want them to be able to actually build the experiences that sets you apart and that makes you meaningful to your customers. If we've already seen that shift towards having to build yourself happen over the last five years, the shift that AI will lead towards in user experiences, the shift towards the UI 2.0 will make it unimaginable to be able to just buy an experience in a box and be relevant five years from now. So we'll see a big shift towards composable architectures to be able to keep up with the constant amount of change, both of the experiences we need to build and in all the new components we'll need to pull in powered by different types of, of, of AI. As we look at this from, from Netlify's lens, we also think that every time this kind of fundamental transformation happened, just as when there was a fundamental change from, from, from the desktop to mobile, there'll be a battle of the platform. And there'll be a battle around the open web versus walled off gardens. We saw that very clearly with, with, with mobile, with a pull towards mobile application platforms with a clear owner. And it's been a big part of Netlify's mission to help the web win. This will happen again as we see new platforms emerge around AI models. We'll see large model makers build their own application landscapes that are walled gardens. We'll see new tools emerge to try to build the app for everything as the big walled garden. But we'll also see the web fight back again. And, and we'll see uh, the path to build truly interoperable standards for how everyone can participate in an open platform, buy their own domain, own their own properties, and drive their own innovation in the same way that, that, that we've seen over the last 10 years. And we, of course, believe in the web. We believe it will win, but it won't win unless we make an effort to get there. We also believe in, in developers. I said, it, I said it before, I think 10 years from now, we'll only have an order of magnitude more developers. AI will help drastically democratize the ability to build stuff with computers. We've seen tools like Devin from Cognition Apps as an early example of how in the future, everyone can have a developer. Everyone can work with a developer. And some people think that that means that developers will be completely commoditized and no one will want to be a developer. I think on the contrary, it'll drive the demand up for custom development and we'll have more and more people working as developers. But developers will have to evolve their tool set to include AI-based tooling. Just as developers today, hopefully, have adopted a whole new tool set than what they were using 10 years ago. I know that for me, very, very few of the tools I use day to day even existed 10 years ago. That's been a constant fact of, of being a developer and we believe that that will continue, but it puts so much weight on all of you as developers to educate yourself and learn how to use AI to build things you could only dream on before. We also believe that this will lead to a large transformation in, in the enterprise that will be an important driver of, of revenue and business as all large companies will have to understand how to position themselves in this landscape of UI 2.0 as they'll have to imagine how to build the user experiences that the customers start to demand and as the drive to onboard more and more developers to build more and more customized and the interactive experiences accelerates their business. And at Netlify, we want to help companies get there and be uh, successful with their customers in this changing landscape. When we think about AI and Netlify, we think about AI in four different pillars, essentially. The first one is how can our company use AI to be more productive? How can we adopt AI-based tooling in a safe manner, respecting our customers' privacy to move faster and to build more things with the same resources as we have now? That's a really important pillar that we are investing a lot in, experimenting with tools that can help our developers write code faster, help our legal department close contracts faster, help our support team manage cases faster, and so on. The second pillar is how can we help developers using Netlify build new experiences on top of AI. 
large this is not that different from from the overall a uh, composable architecture most of the ai functionalities are typically exposed as api endpoints in in new in this methodology but we'll see the need for new primitives on our platform we'll we'll have to think through if you start building with a more asynchronous, more agent-based interface in mind, what is the tool set we need to provide to allow developers to, to really build those kind of experiences with the same zero friction approach that we've taken to the current set of, of web development tools. And we have a big eye on what do we believe won't change over the last over the next 10 years. We still believe you'll need URLs, you'll need to push code through the system, you'll have to push content through the system, you'll have to use oversight over what the end users are actually getting from your systems. And that's where we are building our platform on the things that we believe will last so we can help our customers navigate through change. The third big pillar for us is really how can AI make developers more productive with Netlify? How can we help teams shift faster with AI? You will have seen one of our first launches in this space that the little why did it fail button within our UI. One of the most common stumbling block when a developer makes a new pull request and are trying to launch a new feature is the message that your build failed. They'll go into Netlify and they'll traverse a whole bunch of logs and try to find this precise line that indicates that's wrong and then understand why that line is giving an error and, and try to come up with a fix. We added a simple AI powered button that says, why did it fail? That'll immediately give you an AI based diagnostics of what went wrong in this build and a proposed solution to what can you do to fix it. I think this is a clear indication of the path where we sit, how, how we can use AI, not to introduce more chatbots that you have to ask questions of, but to simplify your workflow and uh, make your team ship faster. The fourth way we are thinking about AI is the emerging AI ecosystem and how Netlify fits into that as a programmable platform. We launched a, a while ago our, our Netlify GPT for OpenAI's GPT store. And we're already now seeing more than a thousand sites every day being created on Netlify from ChatGPT. A lot of these are still toy projects or experiments and so on. It's still very early days for this. But we can see how a whole ecosystem is emerging there where within any scope of chat GPT, if you're interacting with another GPT that generates charts or the more coding GPT, you can always just add mention Netlify's GPT and deploy a, a new website straight from there. This is going to be a pattern of AIs doing stuff, interacting with our system, building and, and deploying. Similar with Devin from Cognition Labs, that's one of the first take on a full AI-powered developer that builds and deploys on Netlify by default. When I first started Netlify, the MVP before it had the tagline, hosting for the programmable web. So we always saw this piece of fitting into a broader programmable system that can interact with Netlify, drive web deployments and build and deploy and operate even through automation. That will only be more important as we go into the future. So we're thinking through these four pillars of one, how can we use AI to be more productive? Two, how can we help developers build better apps with AI? Three, how can we help teams ship faster through AI-based features? And four, how can we make Netlify a part of the ecosystem of AIs and automation around us? I'm excited for the rest of today's talks. Thank you so much. And please be sure to join me again a bit later in our event for a conversation with Scott Wu, CEO of Cognition Labs and the creator of Devin, the world's first AI software engineer.